Excellent. Welcome everyone to our 16th now episode of Beyond the Badge. Uh, I'm your host, Steve Fecto from Talent Development and Learning. I'm joined uh, with my backstage team of Michael Joseph, Alyssa Jean Andrea, and Jessica Rubin uh, here supporting what is backstage, this enthusiastic, a little bit anxious group of people, employees across the Mount Sinai Health System who have gone beyond the badge in their roles and stories we're really excited to share. I'm also joined backstage by our Mount Sinai Spotlight Committee. They're going to be presenting these stories to us. These are the folks that are really passionate and committed to employee engagement, recognition, and appreciation efforts uh, across our system. I'm so delighted to be able to work with them regularly on this program and many, many others. Uh, so we're going to have them come up and join us throughout the episode. Uh, but most important guests are you. Thank you for joining. I see the numbers are starting to fill in over the next few minutes. I know our audience is going to be piling in to celebrate 19 employee stories that we have to share with you. And if you are new to this series, because it's an employee that you work with or a family member that you're here to support and cheer on, uh, I want to give some background of, of why these folks are being celebrated today. Uh, every single day, there is a system daily huddle where our top leadership from across the entire 42,000 employee Mount Sinai Health System come together to huddle up and go over important details to have an effective, high quality and safe day here across our Mount Sinai Health System. Uh, and then that extends into some additional huddles at each site. But this is the big one uh, that our senior leadership attend. And they get a spot in a rotation where the leader knows it's my day. I get to celebrate an employee, and they've been scouring for great stories to share, sometimes from incredible patient letters, sometimes from star peer-to-peer -peer recognition submissions that they just love. Sometimes it's these one-time events that take place. They say, this was amazing. I've got to share what happened and who made it happen. Uh, and sometimes it's just a spotlight, special programs or special roles uh, in their hospitals, and they do it with such pride. And we collect these stories thanks to the help of the, the team that coordinates the huddles, uh, including Joe Mari, Swati Garg, Hillary Polly. They collect the names, they collect the stories, and they send them to us so that we can reshare them out to this bigger audience uh, and help praise these employees and their stories more publicly. So I want to welcome all of you here for the first time. And those who are coming for uh, repeat guests are often our leaders. We have many of our leadership from around the system who love coming back month after month to celebrate and cheer on employees uh, that they know and love uh, who are honored. Um, and I know there's many of them out there. I uh, choose a couple every episode to come on up and, and kick things off. And, you know, I had to, it's National Nurses Month. Um, so I had to go to Dr. Beth Oliver, who's our Chief Nurse Executive and Senior Vice President from Mount Sinai Health System. Uh, and Beth, thank you for being here. A lot of nurses in today's episode. I just want to give you a chance to say hello and welcome our audience. Thank you so much, Steve. I am so thrilled to be here today to celebrate all of the Mount Sinai staff who are being recognized for going beyond the badge. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to you on behalf of our patients, our colleagues, and the greater Mount Sinai community. Your dedication, your commitment, and your courage deserve our deepest gratitude and admiration. You consistently model excellence and commitment to the health system's mission, vision, and values and I am so grateful to be part of this dynamic team. As you know, we are nearing the end of Nurses Month, which we celebrate in May. I've had the privilege of celebrating many of our nursing colleagues across the system this month and the tremendous contributions that have made to our healthcare system and beyond. Today, I am thrilled to be celebrating all of you, and I look forward to hearing your st incredible stories of excellence that will be shared today. Thank you for your commitment to our patients, your colleagues, and your work here at the Mount Sinai Health System. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Beth. I know you're going to love the nursing stories, and I also know you're going to love all the stories that represent exactly who Mount Sinai uh, Health System you know, strives to be in our mission and our values and our We Find A Way purpose. Uh, you're going to really love it, and, and I want to go on to our next uh, senior leader. Uh, we <laughs> rotate. A lot of our sites are represented, and we're going to bring on Mount Sinai Queens this time. Cameron Hernandez is our Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer for Mount Sinai Queens. A couple of great Queens stories to share, too, but I'll let you welcome our, our whole audience. Yes, definitely. Uh um, I'll be a little biased. Queens is in the house, so I'm very, very excited about this. I think we have two out of the 19, which is, you know, we're the smallest, but the mightiest. But anyhow, I'll leave that alone. Uh, I want to thank everyone and all of the participants uh, and their family members for coming on today. This is one of my most exciting things to do. 
uh, is to hear the stories, hear the stories of the people that we hear about in huddle, uh, actually see their faces, uh, see the gratitude from everyone as they drop in hearts, uh, as we can see on the screen, and happy faces and cry faces and all the all the other fun things. So, you know, collecting these stories is very, very important to our institution. Um, it is really how we celebrate each and every one of you and 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 how we show our mission and how we, you know, rise to the occasion as we take care of our patients. And again, it's all about the patients. It's all about being patient-centered. And then there's all of us who are there to help support that mission. So I want to thank you and everyone who is who is being celebrated today, as well as your family members who are here. Um, again, I'm very excited to see everyone's faces and hear the stories again. Thank you so much. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much for that great and enthusiastic kickoff. And, and you're right. You know, we're here for our patients and you're going to hear a lot of stories that come. We're, our first category is right about patient letters who they told us themselves. Um, but what I love about these episodes is seeing stories from all the different corners uh, of our institution and just some incredible work that's happening and learning about programs that are so exciting that Mount Sinai is involved with and they're being honored and celebrated. So I'm really looking forward to sharing these with all of you. With that, I want to jump right into it because we've got a lot a lot of stories to go through here today. And I'm going to start with our biggest group. It's our uh, a team uh, out at uh, from the Clinical Command Center who recognized this team. It's going to take us a little while to, to bring them up. It's an 18-person group that I think has grown uh, since they first kicked off uh, a while ago with just nine people. Um, but they are the uh, Virtual Patient Observation Care Coordination Team. So we'll start with this big group so they can get back to their, their work. And I'm going to have my colleague, Kathy Gilbert, from Mark and communications kick this one off. All right, thanks, Steve. How exciting to kick it off today and to be introducing such a big team. So here we go. The virtual patient observation program went live in September, and this growing team of virtual care coordinators has monitored 991 patients, totaling 50,000 534 monitoring hours. They have prevented numerous patient falls, elopements, medical device removals, and have kept, helped keep our clinical staff safe by intervening when patients have become aggressive or combative. There have also been several great catches made by our VCCs alerting nursing staff to a range of health and behavior concerns that required immediate attention. We consider our virtual care coordinators part of our patient's care team, and we are very grateful for the commitment they demonstrate daily to keeping our patients and our staff safe. Yeah, thank you. This was one of those uh, new programs that I wasn't aware of and was really excited to hear about. And I, I love if there's a spokesperson for the group uh, to share, you know, as you've had this early success and growth as a team, if you could highlight the value you see as a team and the work you're uh, that, that you provide to both the patients and to the clinical care teams um, and how you view that work. I'd like to thank you guys for at least acknowledging us. That's, it was very, very much appreciated. Uh, my name is Troy um, and I'm also here with Christine and the toy is online and there's also um, Laura and addition, Ms. Selena over here. Um, and so we just, for we just wanted to highlight, I'm going to, we jotted some things down because we wanted to make sure that we were able to just kind of like hit on some things that were very important to us. And so we wanted to highlight that our team and the work that, that excuse me, work comes from various ways our team enhances patient safety, quality, and patient experience mm -hmm. across all shifts. For example, we are another set of eyes for the nurses and have alerted staff to changes in behavior that have required immediate attention by the clinical team. We make staff aware of safety concerns that occur on the night shift, which can be different from the day shift. Um, help keep, keep patients, excuse me, patients company, especially, excuse me, I'm skipping all over the place. We help keep patients company, especially those who are confused and lonely. Yeah. In addition, we make the patient's care team aware of safety concerns regarding the hospital's environment, even concerns with the family and who may be a threat to the patients and visitors. Um, we create necessary distractions, buying time to alert unit staff to prevent adverse events. We help alleviate anxiety when we speak with patients, making them feel like their needs are being addressed. We bring family members comfort, knowing that we are there when they leave. And additionally, we collaborate 
uh, we're a collaborative effort between our team, patients, family members, and the clinical staff supports optimal patient outcomes. It's so wonderful. And just listening to you speak, I'm hearing the, the duality of the vigilance for safety and the empathy and compassion and connection. And those are two unique skills that you all have to possess to be able Absolutely. to do your work so well. And it's a, it's a beautiful program to hear about. I'm so glad to hear it's growing. And, and congrats on the recognition. Thanks to the Clinical Command Center for shouting you guys out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Kathy. We're going to go into our next section now. We'll do more spotlights like that at the end, but we want to let that big team go first. And the next grouping of about six stories is from appreciation by patients. So these were mostly from patient letters or comments that um, led to these recognitions. And we're going to start at the FBA Access Center for uh, Lenita Bertrand. Uh, and Sadiqa Horn is going to read that story. Hi, Steve. And congratulations to all the honorees today. A patient recognized scheduling coordinator Luneda Bertram commenting on how pleased she is when she hears that Luneda will be on assisting her because she is caring, knowledgeable, a good listener, compassionate, and super smart. She hopes she gets she can get Luneda every time when she calls for her inquiry and asks that she be acknowledged for her dedication and professionalism. Thank you, Luneda. Your commitment to caring for patients is appreciated. Thank you. I love to picture the patient making the call and fingers crossed that you're the one who answers it. I just love that idea. And I ask you, you know, what is it you think that your patients appreciate the most that leaves them with that feeling that they, they really hope to talk to you? Um, again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, but I do believe my patients appreciate uh, my um, ability to listen attentively and express compassion. Um, our, patient, our patients feel um, a sense of comfort when they're um, aware that they have our undivided attention. Um, I know when I'm speaking with patients, I want to um, imagine myself on the other end as if I'm the patient. Um, my apologies. Um, and to think of how I'd want to be treated and assisted. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. The visualization and, you know, thinking every time you pick up the phone, putting yourself in that spot and it comes through clearly in, in the way these patients are, are sharing their appreciation for you. So thank you so much, Lenita. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Congrats. Nice. Uh, and Sadiqa, we'll be back to you later on. I know you've got another story in our spotlight section, but for now, we're going to go out to Mount Sinai, Queens next. Zachary Key is ready to read a story uh, that included a few colleagues, um, Schubert Chang, Deborah Freeman, and Mary Murphy. Mary's no longer with Queens, but if we have Deborah and Schubert available, we can bring them up. Oh, they're not, they're not here just yet, Zachary. Maybe we'll, yeah. we'll hold off on this and hope that they can come on. I yeah, I'll reach out. Thank you. Sorry, we'll yeah, stall right, for a bit. We'll see if they can, can make it on. Um, let's come back to them and let's go to Dr. Elena Kessler, who I know is here and I've seen in the room. So Nidia Sanchez, our colleague at Chelsea Center, is going to read this story for Dr. Kessler. Welcome. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Dr. Elena Kessler, our new breast oncologist at Chelsea, consistently received superlative feedback from our patients and collaborates with staff throughout the center in service of providing excellent care. A few recent appreciative comments include, I was very impressed with doctor, with the doctor. Seeing her for the first time, she knew my history as if I was her longtime patient, A+. Plus. My new oncologist is on spot. On a truly compassionate physician, Dr. Kessler was amazing. She spent so much time with me and answered all my questions. Dr. Kessler is a pleasure to work with. She is very knowledgeable, professional, and is a good professor and counselor to her residents and patients. We thank you, Dr. Kessler, for we thank Dr. Kessler for her compassionate patient care and welcome her to downtown Chelsea family. Yeah, wonderful. So the comments are rolling in. It sounds like you started your Mount Sinai career on the right foot. Uh, can you tell us about or describe the excellent care you're committed to providing to your patients uh, that it's leading to these great comments? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I want to say this is really, it's quite humbling and it's very meaningful. You know, I received all my postgraduate training at Mount Sinai. So mm. after many years of training, this is my first year as an attending. So it's my honor to not only be able to care for patients with breast cancer, but also to receive, you know, this wonderful praise from patients and colleagues. Uh, so to answer your question, you know, caring for patients, it's, it's truly a highlight of what I do. And as an oncologist, 
I have the opportunity to guide patients through all stages of their cancer journey, from diagnosis to curative and palliative treatment. And I think that listening to patients during all these stages and hearing their stories is one of the most important aspects of providing quality care. So thank you again. Really very meaningful to me. Wonderful. And I'm sure our audience is picking up on the keys, the people who are excelling and getting these patient letters, listening. It keeps coming up over and over again. I know we'll continue to hear that. Great listening. And I love what you said, listening to their stories, not just their what they're sharing, but the story around the person. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And congratulations. I'm glad to hear you got your training at Mount Sinai too. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And thank you, Nydia. Uh, we're going to go into New York Eye and Ear. I know this pair is together and ready to go. Catherine Mercado and Theodora Di Marabe. Uh, so I'm going to have Christine uh, Pescator come on up and read this wonderful story for, for Dee and Kat. Thank you. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. A New York Eye and Ear patient wrote, I wanted to let you know about the outstanding care my mom received today during her eye surgery. Her nurse, Dee Marabe, and Catherine Mercado went above and beyond in their care for her. I, unfortunately, could not be here today, and they put me at ease. My mom felt like she was important and not just as a patient. If you could please commend them on such, a great, on such great patient care, that would mean so much to us. It is hard to find such dedication and professionalism these days. NYEE leadership adds that Kat greets everyone who enters the unit with warmth and empathy. Her welcoming smile puts everyone at ease, especially our patients who are waiting for surgery. Dee is seen as a role model and a leader in our unit. She treats every patient like family and is a big supporter of new projects and initiatives on how to exceed patients' expectations and deliver quality care. We thank you, Kat and Dee, for all of your hard work and contributions to New York Eye and Ear. One, you know what I love about this is that the patient's family member wasn't even there and wrote a letter to say, you know how much this mother was praising the experience and named you by name that they were able to, to write this letter, which is incredible. And I, and I took the line that stood out to me as you help the patient feel important and not just a patient. And I wonder if you could address that and say, you know, what do you think you do that helps your patients feel important? I think for us at Ioneer, we have like a camaraderie, like not only like do I feel like she's my family, D, I feel like for the patients as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to cry, sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, I do this every day. So for, for me, it uh, comes naturally and they're like family to me already. Yeah, me too. We spend most of our time here anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I really treat the patients like um, like my family. I listen to them. And I try to advocate for that. Yeah. And then um, try to create a compassionate, comfortable environment for that. This is very humbling. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. and what amazing to think that the patients go home and they're talking about you to their family members. How was your trip, mom? Like, what, did, what happened? Like, well, I've got to tell you about Cat and D. No, I know. That's <laughs> how I was like, it, was, it was unbeknownst. I was like, yeah. me? <laughs> we, do it, we do it every day, yeah. every single patient. How? No matter how difficult, you know, sometimes it can be. Yeah, and to it, remember us, it's really yeah. Awesome, yeah. So we want to say thank you on behalf of every, like the yeah. peri op team. Yeah, Post -op thank you very much for yeah. recognizing us. Yeah, wonderful, mm -hmm. beautiful. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We're so glad we were able to to share the story. Thanks for your time. Thank also. you very much. All right, thank you. I think we have uh, Deborah Freeman, Zach. I'm going to give you a, a time to get set and we'll make sure we have them ready. We're going to come back to you, but let's do our next story first. While we test that out, Mount Sinai South NASA, we have Olivia McGregor is going to represent there to bring on a story for one of our nurses, Brandon Weintraub from South NASA. Let's bring them both up for this next story. Thank Brandon, you so much. There we go. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today to recognize Brandon. And it is such a great event where we get to celebrate so many amazing people doing amazing stuff every day. Brandon Weintraub is the true epitome of what we strive for all nurses to be, caring, compassionate, dedicated, empathetic, understanding, and adaptable. He takes the time to look at a patient as a person and learns about their story, their past, their lives, their likes, building a relationship and trust with patients so they feel safe in his care. Two patients recently wrote to leadership to share how wonderful Brandon was as their nurse, saying, Brandon is one of the most outstanding people I have ever met. He relieved my anxiety and is a terrific person. 
Brandon is not only knowledgeable, but he took the time to explain everything. And another wrote, patient is an outstanding, uh, Brandon is an outstanding nurse who made me feel very comfortable and safe in his care. He has a great personality and took the extra time. He is always helpful and happy. We are thankful to have Brandon on our team and so happy that he represents the TCU at Mount Sinai South NASA. Great. And I'll say, personally, I recognize you and Rita, the patient experience team, jumped and said, yes, Brandon, I'm so excited to share this. Um, so I, I'd love to turn it to you. Uh, you know, they talked about how you build a relationship and trust with your patients. And I'm wondering, Brandon, if you can go into some of the, the ways that you seek to do that. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for having me and congratulations to everybody. Definitely humbled. Um, when it comes to trust, though, um, Really, for me, it's just about offering myself to the patients. Um, a lot of times, one of the first things I'll tell the patients when I go into the room is, what can I do to make your night better? And um, following up on those things is important, too. Um, you know, patients are very easy. They're, it's very easy for patients to see through BS. And, um, you know, when you, tell, when you tell a patient something and you follow through, um, it just means a lot for them and it's it they they gain you know you your trust is gains and um um just i'm i'm happy to i'm happy to be there for the patients every night well trust is huge uh and it was really highlighted as how critical it was in their experience um and it's not easy to build it takes the the listening that we've heard earlier and it takes someone to be there and be present and be in the moment and, and bring them full selves to the, the role. So I loved hearing the double patient letters that came in, and I'm sure they're they're regularly flowing month after month for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brandon, thank you for your, your guidance and, and your, your great response. And, uh, and congratulations. We're so glad we got to share these letters you. with you today. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's go back. Zach, I'm going to bring up, I think we have her under another name. But we're going to bring up Deborah Freeman and have Zach come on up. She's going to represent this this trio that was shared. There we go. That's Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Welcome. Deborah. And Zachary, take Perfect. it away. I'll do a name change in the meantime. Thank you, Steve. Uh, cool. <laughs> so uh, a patient, a retired nurse, submitted the following letter of appreciation. My husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer this summer and is undergoing chemo at Mount Sinai, Queens. He's also blind and uses a cane for mobility assistance. During a recent visit for a PET scan, upon seeing our lost traveler faces, we were rescued by nurse Deborah Freeman. We did not have to ask for directions because Ms. Freeman took charge and escorted us the entire way. Ms. Freeman has the most positive attitude. I felt the urge to dance with her the entire length of the hall. When we had the luck to meet uh, nurse Mary Murphy, who sang our husband's very Italian last name correctly and beautifully in her lovely Irish brogue. Again, we just knew we were in good hands with Nurse Murphy, who was cheerful and wise and made us feel that my husband's care was number one on her radar. Then, even though we had already won the fantastic employee lottery, we met radiology tech Mr. Schubert Chang, who was cheerful, comforting, professional, and patient, letting my husband take care of his bathroom needs. Mr. Chang has a gift and his patience uh, is an essential attribute. If Mount Sinai has an employee recognition program, Glad we do. Please add Ms. Freeman, Ms. Murphy, and Mr. Chang to your recognition award list. Consider yourselves proud. Happy to comply. And here we, we have it. So Deborah, we'll, we'll bring you off mute there. There we go. And just wondering, you know, this is another one that came from a family member. And I just would love to hear your thoughts on how do you focus on the entire family experience of, of your patients that, that leads to, to great letters like this coming in? And what do you think, Deborah? Oh, are we frozen? Deborah, can you hear us? Oh, looks like we're frozen. Uh -oh, I think I think we got you frozen on your phone, but keep the keep the hearts and applause rolling up in reactions and keep the praise coming in the chat. Uh, and oh, Deborah, I think you unfroze. Here we go. Yeah. Hope to hear your response on how you care for your families. It's a long story, but okay. I'll make I'll give you the shorter version. When my dad has had his accident, which he never recuperated, we were not there to take care of him. So when I got into the medical field, I put it as we couldn't be there for him, but we can be there for someone else. 
And that has been my motto unto this day. That's beautiful. It really is beautiful. And and there's such power in having that compass that that drives your your effort, your daily efforts. And, and people I see often who are celebrated in this platform, it's because they've got some kind of internal purpose like that that they can pull upon emotionally and, and deliver. And that's a, just a beautiful one. Thank you so much for sharing that, Deborah. And I'm sorry to hear about your father. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And thank you, Zach. Zach, just so you know, our next one, Megan McPherson for Mount Sinai Queens, there was a hospital emergency and she's in emergency management. Don't worry, everyone. I'm sure she's got it under control, but we're going to wait till Megan can come back later on um, for that. But I'm going to go into our spotlight or uh, stories of excellence category next. Uh, these are these one-time events that were just remarkable, uh, just examples of someone going beyond the badge, going beyond in their regular role. And we're going to start with supply chain, Carmelo Calderon, uh, is here and Andres Marrera there from Mount Sinai West. So we'll bring you up to read this story for Carmelo. Thank you so much, Steve. Since his promotion last year, Director of Materials Carmelo Calderon has done nothing but work to make Mount Sinai West a better operation. He has greatly reduced overtime, improved team morale, worked to get his team involved in further education, and he has improved on improving the communication with nursing leadership to ensure that they are well stocked and can focus on patients instead of worrying about supplies. As a recent example, one night we received a call from a nurse manager that only had one critical supply left in the building that would be needed in case of an emergency. This supply was on back order, but Carmelo found another Mount Sinai hospital that had a few extra they could spare. Late at night, he personally drove to pick up the item and bring it to Mount Sinai West to ensure our clinical partners would have what they needed to keep our patients safe. Thank you, Carmelo, for all of your hard work, and the supply chain team is very happy to submit you for this Beyond the Badge recognition. Congratulations. Wonderful. And Cameron, if you recognize Carmelo, I know he was a director of Mount Sinai Queens in supply chain and has a long history at Sinai, from a frontline picker throughout your career, many different roles to where you are, and, and Mount Sinai West is clearly proud to have you uh, and honored to have you working at, at West. And I'd love to ask, as you've continued through your career, has there been this all along, this underlying sense of purpose that drives your work every day? Yes, the purpose is, uh, you know, patient care, bottom line. Um, <laughs> It's important that these patients have what they need, the supplies, they, the doctors, the nurses, they have so much to do. Um, to worry about supplies, it's, they shouldn't be worrying about that. I hate to hear that a doctor can't have, a, you know, a patient can't have surgery because we're missing some type of supply. Shouldn't be that. Uh, we should be taking care of our patients to the utmost. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what's really driving me. Uh, patient care is very important for us here, especially supply chain. That's beautiful. I, and I, I love it. Thank you so much for putting that so succinctly and, and really powerfully. I think it's all of us in our audience, it's important for those of us like myself who aren't in clinical roles. To, how do I connect to the patient? Because that is why we're here. Everything comes back to that patient experience uh, and having safe quality care. And thank you, Carmela, for being a, a director that leads with that for your you and your team. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Michelle Jobless, Carlos Mesita, Kevin McDonald, my Queens family. <laughs> And especially my Mount Sinai team over here as well. Thank Wonderful. You Wonderful. Right. Thanks so much, Carmelo. All right. Take care. All right. Next up, I'm going to go out to Mount Sinai, Beth Israel. We have a security officer standing by, Earl Clark, um, who is recognized uh, by Mount Sinai Health System Support and Ancillary Services. So they are, over the entire system, had this great story about Officer Clark that we'd love to share. Diana, why don't you take this one? Great. Thanks, Steve. So an employee shared this story of appreciation for MSBI security officer, Earl Clark. She shared that I was on my way to the bank during my break when I unknowingly dropped a large sum of money. Upon arriving at the bank, I realized it was missing and immediately felt panic and hopelessness. I hurriedly attempted to retrace my steps and despite my efforts, I was unable to find the money. Two days later, a miracle happened. While walking through the Bernstein lobby, I was stopped by Officer Clark. To my surprise, he asked me if I had lost some money and showed me footage from the security cameras. On the video was me walking through the lobby and dropping the money from my jacket. He had been making an effort to trace and identify the person who owned the money and referred me to the cashier's office where he had secured the money he found. I cannot thank Earl enough for finding my money and for his honesty and integrity. I hope that this story may highlight Officer Clark's great character. 
Oh, thank you. And, and Officer Clark, really wonderful story to hear the perspective of, of the relief from this employee. And I'd love to hear your side of it. What was it like for you? How did you trace this person? What did it well, feel like to finally spot them and connect with them? Okay, I want to congratulate all the nominees. Um, it, was, it didn't make sense to see this money on the floor. And I just, and what I really did was when you when I viewed the camera, it didn't show who dropped the money. So I had to backtrack and go frame by frame. And that's why I saw the money leaving her pocket and drop it on the floor. But I want to cover also, I want to talk about my coworkers. I want to use this spot by to speak about my officers. Mm -hmm. I train most of these guys. I send them to respond. When dialogue fails, security has to handle the situation. We can talk our way out of all situations. Sometimes we deal with psych, we deal with drug, uh, drug uh, rehab. rehab patients, and we there's no talking there. Hands got to be placed on these people. And I send my officers, and they always respond. They never waver, mm -hmm. and they do a great job. And the nurses and staff feel safe with my officers responding to the situation. I want to highlight that more than finding the money. Well, I, I thank you and applaud you for taking this, this opportunity to, to shout out your officers. And I, and I think I love when, when a security officer is on this show and remind our audience to take a moment, go thank a security officer uh, as you're leaving the building today, entering the building today. And just remember all the ways that they're there for our safety, our personal safety, and, and in these moments like this, where they come through as our heroes. Thank you, thank Officer you. Clark. I appreciate it. All right. And thank you, Diana. Uh, next up is a pair in the network practices. I'm going to have Rebecca Asmussen come up and share a story for Kelly Kazanecki and Melissa Saldariaga, who are there together. There we go. And let's take it away, Rebecca. Yeah, thank you, Steve. While walking through the parking lot on their way to lunch, Kelly and Melissa noticed a gentleman leaning on his car and just staring. They asked if he was okay, and he said he was lightheaded and dizzy. Kelly held the patient up while Melissa ran to get a wheelchair. They brought him to the lobby and offered him juice and cookies. They were so kind and calming with the patient and he was so grateful. When he thought he was okay, they suggested it'd be better if he went to the doctor to see how to proceed. He agreed, stayed in the wheelchair and Carol, the greeter, brought him upstairs to his appointment. Kelly and Melissa are a great team. They both work in orthopedics and the patients are great fans of theirs. They are a real asset to the Mount Sinai community and a, their commitment to excellence and outstanding patient care. Thanks, Thank Kelly you. and Melissa. Yeah, you know, this one falls <laughs> under the category of healthcare professionals are always on duty. Uh, even off the lunch, you go out in the parking lot, someone needs help, your eyes are on it, uh, and you jump in to do whatever you can. And, you know, that last line speaks to this commitment of excellence and outstanding patient care. And I wonder if you could describe how you feel about what is that commitment to excellence that you make every day? So I feel like we both went into healthcare because that's just who we are. You're, you want to help people all the time. It doesn't just stop nine to five. It doesn't break during lunch. It's if you see somebody in need, you're going to do whatever you have to do in order to help somebody. And that's just what I feel like Mount Sinai represents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. I agree. Can you agree? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know, that we, we think about it all the time. It's a special calling and, and it's, many of our employees see it as a calling and this is what they were meant to do and, and take great pride and purpose in. And you're clearly a pair that believes in that. And, you know, thank you for this example and what I'm sure is a part of how you interact with every single one of your patients every day. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Kelly and Melissa. All right, Rebecca, I think we'll have you back a little later on. Uh, we're going to go. Now, I know Peter has been having some trouble with his microphone. How are we doing? We have Peter up and ready to go. Got Okay, we've got it. Okay. Yeah. There's Peter Paxos. We're going to have this story. He was recognized by Mount Sinai Health System Pharmacy Leadership. And our colleague and committee member, God's Favor DA, is going to share this story. God's Favor, take it away. Congratulations, everyone. So last month, our Mount Sinai Hospital Pharmacy was alerted to the need for botulinum antitoxin for a patient in our TICU with suspected botulism. Our overnight staff worked with the teams to coordinate a courier to pick up the medication at JFK as it was being released by the CDC. 
When it became clear that the courier would be unable to honor the request in a timely manner, we began to consider alternatives. Pharmacy Director of Operations, Peter Paxos, was on his way to the hospital and determined that taking a detour to JFK was the most efficient solution. He was able to pick up the medication and have it on site before 10 a.m. His quick decision-making and willingness to go out of his way allowed us to have the medication available as soon as it was needed. Way to go, Peter. Thank you. Now, it probably wasn't this dramatic, but Peter, I'm picturing this, like getting the call, screeching tires, 180, <laughs> flipping around, going to JFK. But, but really, you know, this was an instant decision where you said, I'm going to just take care of this. I'm not going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to go. And it's being proactive. Uh, and that comes from a clear sense of purpose and commitment you have for, for your patients, I, I would think. So I wonder if you could describe that. What is that, that sense of purpose that drives you in your work to go beyond the badge uh, and make this extra effort? Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you know the, the opportunity to receive some of the recognition for this, but really goes much beyond me to, to the rest of the team. Um, it, it's, it's great to have an opportunity to be in a position to have been able to go ahead and do this. Um, you know, our team works every morning. We, we communicate and collaborate early in the morning on, on any issues that come up. And I just happen to be in a spot where uh, I could help at that moment. But the fact is that uh, any one of our managers, any one of our team members would have done the same thing in that spot. In so I want to use this opportunity to sort of stretch out that spotlight and pull them all into that spotlight with me because uh, I really appreciate working with every single one of them every day. Uh, I think we have a, a great and unselfish group of people that, that love to work together every day. And uh, I think that's, that, that's what I wanted to do at this moment. I uh, also wanted to take a minute to recognize all of our pharmacists and our pharmacy staff that work every single day, you know, quietly and consistently mm -hmm. and do great work and their dedication every day. And it's it's my privilege to really be part of the leadership team to lead that group. So well, I want to recognize them. Thank you, Peter. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than a, a complete team aligned in the same purpose. Uh, and having that clear amongst the team, that when we have our teamwork value, that's what it is. The team is together and collaborating along that aligned and same purpose to, to care for patients. So I love what you said, and I, I want to thank you for giving them a shout out. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Peter. And thanks, God's favor. We'll have you back in a little bit for another story. Uh, actually, we'll do that right now. I think Janice is here and ready to go. We're going to move into our next section, which is appreciation by colleagues. So a lot of these came from star recognitions. A lot of them came from other you know, leadership who wanted to give a shout out to a story. So we have Janice here ready to go. Uh, this was Mount Sinai Hospital recognized Janice Wari. Uh, so God's favor, we'll keep you on for this story. All right. A colleague wrote, I would like to recognize business associate Janice Jarby for her genuine compassion and empathy to our families. Last Friday, there was a mother at the front desk that was being covered by Janice. The mom was very anxious, had a lot of questions and just needed to talk to someone. Janice, not knowing the clinical situation, comforted her and redirected her thinking from anything bad happening to focusing on the positive. Janice provided her with suggestions on coping, distracted her with meal choices, and helped mom express the cool traits of her child. Towards the end of their discussion, they were laughing, smiling, and the positive feel was palpable. Thank you, Janice, for supporting our families and being the friend that our parents need to talk to about topics that are personal to them. You truly were a breath of fresh air for this mom. Oh, thank you, Janice. You know, not only is this a beautiful story, but I love that it comes from colleagues that saw this interaction. We're so proud and touched to see it that they wanted to write it up and share it with leadership. Um, and so, you know, they they really value on your team. And I'm wondering, how do you keep yourself open and ready for these intimate moments where you can support a family member? Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, it's truly uh, honored, and I'm grateful for being recognized. And I keep myself open because I know the parents, I work in pediatrics, they're stressed already. So I just, <clears throat> I support them just like I wanna be supported. So that's how I go about it. 
That's that's wonderful. And I know a lot of them are on right now. Your leader asked me, can we get the link? What time is Janice going on? I want to make sure everyone comes on and sees her. So they're so proud to come on and, and see you be honored. And to take the time to write this up is really shows how much they really appreciate what you do uh, for, for the patients in your unit. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much, Janice. And thank you, God's favor, for, for sharing these last pair of stories. Um, now I'm going to hold up. I know Megan is next on our list. I heard she's on her way back, emergency handled, covered. I'm going to pause to make sure she's back in the room before we go on. So let's skip one for now and I'll wait for a heads up from my team. Let's go to the Network Patient Support Center. Rebecca's always ready to go. Uh, we'll go to her for this story about uh, Jasmine Thomas, who I've seen is here in our room. So I'll turn it over to you, Rebecca, as we bring up Jasmine. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Well, Jasmine was, oh, sorry. Well, Jasmine has only been with the Network Patient Support Center a short time. It has taken her no time at all to make a huge impact on all those who inter interact with her. In March alone, Jasmine received seven star recognitions from managers and colleagues describing her as a positive, kind, and hardworking individual who is always willing to go above and beyond. Several trainers that have had Jasmine in their classes have sung her praises for helping her fellow colleagues, being receptive to new information and changes, and for always being engaged. When our team recently went through some staffing challenges, Jasmine found opportunities where she could help, often offering to stay late and keeping morale positive in the office amongst her team. We are so happy to be able to recognize Jasmine today and are looking forward to seeing where her bright future with us leads. Thanks, Jasmine. Jasmine, seven, seven stars in a month is wild. Um, and I'm just wondering, as you read through these that keep popping up uh, on your computer, you get these messages of appreciation from, from your peers. You know, what is it that stands out to you as this attribute that you are most proud to know that's being being seen and appreciated by your colleagues? Um, thank you, everyone, first of all. Um, I've only been here since January. And I never pictured being in healthcare. Um, like I don't like hospitals and things like that. So, you know, it wasn't a thing for me, but the position came from a friend and I was like, you know what? I'm good at customer service. I've been doing it since I was 15. So, you know, why not do it again? Um, so I came in and I was excited to work because I had just recently had a child before I did it. I'm gonna make this fast, sorry. Um, so. I was excited to work because I was out the house. Um, so I was excited to work. Um, I got to see other people outside of my baby. I love her, but you know, I need the faces. So I was excited to see other people and helping patients is, it makes me happy to hear them on the phone. You get them, they're angry or they need medication or they want the doctor to know something. And then you say, not a problem. I'll take care of that for you the response in return is the best feeling that like, it, it really feels good. And it makes me happy that I was, I'm able to be just a, a little bit mm -hmm. good for them. And it matters to me that much because you never know how someone's day is going. So to be able to help them just that, to make an appointment and that means the world to them to say, yep. yes, you can come in to see your doctor. It makes me happy to make them happy. And being able, I'm, I'm always really real with them. Like just, I, we have conversations. I talk to them like they're my friends and they talk to me back. They appreciate that. I hear it when they yeah. talk to me. They're like, thank you. You know, I appreciate that really, really good. Cause you gotta talk, they're people too, you know, they're patients, but they're people. So if you're honest with them and you're, you're real to them, you can connect with them. That's what they like the most I find with my patients. And sorry, I was crying because y'all are making me emotional. Um, so that's just what it is. I'm able to connect with them. And I think that they can feel it. And I think that yeah. they can hear my smile over the phone. Because I tell people, your smile can be heard. Even if they don't see you, they can hear it. So I think that's what it is that makes yeah. them like and me. And with great phrases like that, you could be teaching a class in it for, for other people. I love the, the positive energy. And, and I really love the message of, you know, I, you might not be able to solve every one of their problems, but here's where I can help and I'm going to help and making sure you do. And, and your stories about how you impact the patients and clearly with all these stars, you're making just as big an impact on your colleagues. So uh, incredible work. Uh, and we're so glad we, you were able to share, share your insights on it today. 
Thank you. I really appreciate everyone and, and congratulations to everyone else and my team. I love my manager. Charlene is the best. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that. Charlene Carroll. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank Congrats, you. Congrats, Jasmine. All right. I'm going to take a special request. Uh, as someone who's got to get right back to their work and cannot be here long. We're going to bounce around God's favor. I'm going to give you a quick heads up. We're going to come back to you. I know Megan is back. We're at Agility is a Value at Mount Sinai. We're going to be bouncing around in my schedule here. If you've seen your program, there's a great program uh, that we made up. You can follow along, but I'm bouncing from it. So we have Evan Liu from Mount Sinai Health System Labs uh, Leadership who recognized Evan, uh, who I know we'll, we'll get his camera on if we can, but God's favor, I know he's here. I see him backstage. And if we could read Evan's story to start things off. And you can go ahead and get, he's listening in. Doesn't have a camera. All right. The Department of Pathology recognized Mr. Evan Liu of the Serology Lab for his remarkable contributions to the new test development projects. Since joining Mount Sinai in 2021, Mr. Liu was the lead in helping the lab to set up the high throughput automation line for antibody testing and became an active member of the lab team for the Seronet project. Mr. Liu's creative and innovative thinking help the lab solve problems and improve processes while implementing all new tests. His contributions were tremendous to the success of the new test development project, and we appreciate the effort he put in to ensure that everything was completed per New York State, FDA, and CDC guidelines. Mr. Liu always puts a smile on his teammates' faces and is known among the team as the one-man army for staying with the lab at all needed times and efficiently handling crises. We sincerely thank Mr. Evan Liu for his hard work and commitment to excellence. Wonderful. Evan, if you're, you're there, I know you might not be able to come on camera, but if you can come off mute, I'd love to ask you to, to respond. This really sounds like a, a we find a way promise type of story uh, in how you handle these crises and situations. Um, and I'd love to, to hear your response on how you approach with confidence to, to have such great success. I'm gonna, gonna pause with, yeah, there we go, Evan, you're off mute and let's hear. You there, Evan? All right, well, it looks like we're having a little bit of an issue in the labs. I know sometimes it's tough to have a camera and a microphone in some of our, our areas, including the labs. Evan, if you're able to maybe give us a response in the chat, if your microphone isn't working, uh, we'd love to hear you respond. And I know you had to get, get back to, to work there. All right, but thank you, God's favor. Love sharing the story and, and great work, uh, Mr. Evan Liu, um, on, on the, your incredible work in the lab. I love the one-man army phrase that you're how you're seen by your colleagues uh is wonderful um i see uh i know our folks from brooklyn are in a room together we're going to get to you in a moment i see megan is back i'm going to go back to our final story uh in the colleagues appreciation section if zach's ready megan mcpherson ready in the moment ready to respond that's why you're being honored here today so let's start off with your story the hilarious irony that we had an emergency while our emergency manager is uh being Honor today. <laughs> but uh, Megan McPherson, Emergency Manager of Mount Sinai, Queens, has been the recipient of numerous star recognition awards over the years. These peer-to-peer -peer star recognitions identify and applaud her broad scope of positive attributes, including her commitment to empathy, teamwork, creativity, equity, agility, excellence, welcoming, and wayfinding, safety, and compassion. The following is a compilation from several of her recent stars. Megan was amazing. She brought such great energy. I'm so grateful. Megan's hard work and expertise is what made us strong and helped us excel at Mount, at his Mount Sinai team. Thank you for always lending a hand when we need help. We appreciate your teamwork and guidance. And thank you for helping Megan. It's a pleasure working with you. Thank you. What I love about this is that they captured all the different types of stars. It's not like you're just praised for safety or something. They, it hits like every bucket, every category of stars you've received. So Megan, I'd love to turn it to you. You got so many fans. Uh, shouting out your, your great work. What is it in your approach to your work that you think uh, people really appreciate the most? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for kind of bopping around in the program as we had a live emergency <laughs> happening. I appreciate that. Uh, agility, right? Um, and thank yeah. you, Zach. Uh, I'm grateful to Vice President Boyce put me in for this recognition. I think it's really important to build relationships and partnerships with departments in the blue sky days, uh, because when the toughest days come, as we saw out here with our Queens family during COVID, 
um, gone through that all together. Uh, you have a shorthand and you have a trust and you have a bond that gets you through. Like Dr. Hernandez said earlier, we're small, we're tiny and mighty. Um, but I think that tact that our entire emergency management department takes across the health system, each of the sites, um, you know, even though this is my name, this is all of us doing the same work in every building uh, and working on relationships with our colleagues and keeping them safe. So I think that's really what we're trying to do. And if this comes along, that's wonderful. We're happy to have those partnerships. Spectacular. Well, well thank you. And I'm sure the stars are going to continue to flood in uh, for you, maybe from today, <laughs> from whatever does happen. Hope all's okay. All is okay. All clear. But okay, it was fun. Good. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. It's been wonderful having you on, Megan. Thanks so much for joining us Thank and congrats you. on the on the recognition. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Zach. Um, we got four stories left in our employee spotlight section. And the funny thing is the next two were from different leaders. One was a Mount Sinai Brooklyn leader and one was a system um, Mount Sinai Health System radiology leader. And they both chose people from the same department in radiology at Mount Sinai Brooklyn. So I'm gonna have our, our colleague in our Mount Sinai Spotlight Network, uh, Betts Bree come up and read for John Leno. And following that, we have one for Salvatore Renda. Colleagues are there together. All right, Betts, we're up to you. All right, congratulations, everybody. Uh, so this is for John Leno. Radiology lead tech John Leno has been Mount Sinai for 21 of his 48 years working as a technologist. He is truly an asset managing all the OR cases and quality assurance for the department. After two safety events in radiology related to patient identification, John has taken the lead on educating and modeling the best behaviors for identifying patients by two identifiers. John is extremely compassionate with his patients and takes pride in his work. He is a team player and is always willing to assist the department in it. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, John, safety is always listed first amongst our values uh, from Mount Sinai. And I wonder if you could tell us about your the personal commitment that inspired you to take this lead on educating others on the importance and the best behaviors for, for patient identification. To, uh, they have to know who the patient is, make sure they're doing the right procedure and things like that. So. When I taught them, I taught them the first, the first two things are um, name and date of birth, make sure they're doing the correct procedure and everything. And if that happens, everything will fall into place for them. And that's it. You just have to know what's going on. And yeah. you got to be compassionate to the patient also. Patients come into radiology, they're scared. I, you know, they don't know what's going on. You have to explain to them what's going on, what they're getting and why they're getting it. And that's it. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, thank it's you a for leader- everything also. Thank you for everything. Yeah, well, thank you. And it's a leadership yeah. attribute to take ownership of it, to see it's an issue. It's an ongoing, like, let's, this is two, let's address this. <clears throat> take a lead in educating your peers um, is passion showing and dedication and, and a commitment to safety. So thank you for that, John. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And then surprise, surprise, a colleague in the same department was recognized by radiology leadership. So Betts, let's take this story for, for Salvatore Renda. All righty. So Salvatore Renda, a CT technologist with Mount Sinai, Brooklyn, for 17 years, exemplifies teamwork by taking the initiative to support the department anytime they are in need. Sal is considered the backbone of radiology department. He's the only multi-trained technologist that is skilled in x-ray, CT, and interventional radiology. As a multi-modality tech, Sal occasionally switches between three modalities in a single day without being asked. With his unique willingness to learn, he is interested in undergoing MRI cross-training in the soon to be installed new MRI unit at Mount Sinai, Brooklyn. Style exemplifies key characteristics that an exceptional team player should possess. Please join us in expressing our sincere appreciation and congratulations to Sal for his excellence and service. Yeah, thank you, Betts. It's great. And, and Sal, so your leaders say you exemplify the key characteristics uh, that an exceptional team player should possess. And I wonder if you could speak to that. What do you What do you believe are the key characteristics um, that you you know inspires your work and what you bring to the team? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. John Leno, twenty years ago, helped me get my first X ray job, and I've been following him through. We were at the Coney Island Hospital together. We were at the Victory Memorial Hospital together and we also work for a doctor's office so everything i've learned i have to thank this man thank you sam 
Wow. That, well, that's, that's wonderful. And thank you. And it's great that you guys have followed along in your careers for so many years. And it's clear that the, the Brooklyn leadership and system radiology leadership uh, recognize the difference that you make. Uh, and they highlighted both of you in two different moments this month. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank, thank you very much. much. All right, John. All right, Sal. Thank you so much. Okay, we've got two stories left to go. He's been standing by. We have one from Digital and Technology Partners and one from the Ambulatory Care Call Center. I'm going to go to Digital and Technology Partners next with Eric Smith, who is recognized by leadership in DTP. And I'll have my colleague there, Seema Setia, take this story. Thanks, Steve. Um, so Eric Smith anticipates and seeks opportunities to develop solutions with self-motivation and drive. Overseeing the large, complex, multi-year Sinai Cloud program with phenomenal drive, focus, and dedication. Eric demonstrates every day how to be proactive. He's masterful at managing stakeholders, vendors, and internal and external resources. Clear in his direction, Eric guides the program team with a steady, experienced hand, keeping everyone focused and productive. Decisive, strategic, and practical, Eric surmounts challenging and unexpected obstacles by developing solutions to keep the program moving forward. I can personally vouch for the fact that Eric is highly respected by the team, our stakeholders, and our leadership. Congratulations to all, and especially Eric Smith. All right. Thank you, Seema. You know, I, Eric, I was reading this the first time and I had to go back and count. There were over a dozen different positive attributes that were shouted out uh, for you in this statement. But I, there was one that came up a couple of times in a couple of different ways. And that was your uh, proactive drive, this personal drive that you have. Um, and I'm wondering if you could speak to that. You know, what is what would you say is this personal commitment that you make that drives this proactive approach? Thank you, Steve, and thank you so much, Seema, uh, for this accolade. I'm really humbled, especially in light of all that you do on the initiative as well. And so, you know, just really appreciate this. I'm going to try not to get emotional. Um, for me, it's just really knowing that the work that we're doing supports the overall efficiency of the health system um, and really the important contributions that clinicians and staff are able to make on a daily basis. I'm the son of a clinician um, and really, you know, saw firsthand growing up how important, you know, his work was and really have seen firsthand the ways in which our contributions, you know, contribute again to the organization's ability to provide that top-notch care. So I really appreciate this recognition. Um, I feel that, you know, it certainly should be shared with the rest of the Sinai Cloud program team of which we have, you know, dozens and dozens of members across DTP, HR, supply chain and finance. Um, and just again, really appreciate this recognition. Enthusiastic to continue to work, you know, with everybody alongside and and get things, you know, going with Sinai Cloud. So, uh, really, thank you very much, and thank you, Seema, again, much appreciated. That's great, Eric, and that enthusiasm is is clear <laughs> in in the way you speak with pride about your work and and about your team and your colleagues, uh, and as well as what's been identified, this proactive drive, this enthusiasm to to get into the work uh, and make sure it hits at the end, the patients and, and our, our colleagues. So thank you so much, Eric. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. And thank you, Seema. Our last story of the day is from the Ambulatory Care Call Center. Sadika, we had you early on and we have you wrap things up. Uh, this last one is for Tresha Sneed. Come on up and let's hear Tresha's story. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hi. Tresha. Come on up. We're waiting for a camera to come yeah. on. You can start the story and we'll, we'll bring her up as soon as that can. Okay. So Trisha's need is dedicated to our patients and make sure to always assist them to the best of her ability. Her customer service is impeccable and she speaks to our patients with the utmost respect and empathy as she strives to provide them with excellent patient care. Her knowledge of our workflows is commendable being that we assist dozens of clinics within ambulatory care and she always makes herself available to assist fellow teammates. We are happy to have Trisha at our call center and we sincerely thank her for all her hard work and dedication to our patients. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you, Sadika. All right, yeah, thank you. I see we don't have you on camera, but we were able to get you off mute to respond. And thank you so much for, for the story. I love the line that your service is impeccable. Uh, and I would wonder what you'd say to that. What's at the core of your service that you aim to provide for your patients? Every day when I speak to my mom, I speak to my mom every day. And at the end of my call, my mom, she always tells me every day to be my very best. And 
that is what I strive to do is to be my best and to give my best. And that's to the patients that I speak to. That's to, you know, the manager, my managers at the call center, my colleagues, even people that I come in contact with. It's always to be my best and to strive to, you know, strive for the best. And so that's it. Well, how beautiful to have that daily reminder. I love that you have a wonderful relationship with your mother and that she can give you this daily reminder that fills your, your mind and your heart and how you approach your, your work. And if we, we could all have that call, maybe she can join our system huddle uh, every day and remind <laughs> us all to be our best. We'll have that locked in. Yes, thank you so much, Steve. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thank you, Sadika. And that's a wrap. We're right at one. That's our 18 stories. There was one more um, that was in our program. So if you missed, it was another one by uh, Patience uh, for uh, Thoral Taylor. It was a really wonderful message uh, from a, a patient letter. He wasn't able to join us today. So go check out that one in the program. Uh, but we're back. There was a story shared this morning on the huddle. Our May stories, along with all the other ones that took place in May, will come out in an episode next month on June 22nd, four weeks from today. We'll have another great collection of employee stories of those who went beyond the badge. Until then, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. Special thanks to all our vet service veterans uh, out there and enjoy your weekend. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.